Okay, part three. It only lets me tape in 10 minute increments. So bear with me, this will be the last one I'll run through real quick. So I think we kind of finished up on abuse. Again, just be aware of our demeanor, our um, body language, our, the volume of our voice, how quickly we're taking care of our residents. Sometimes, you know, if we're rushed and, 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 and complaining the whole time, that can be misconstrued as rough handling of patients, or it is rough handling of patients, um, or ignoring patients when giving them care. Um, and we never, ever, ever want to ask a patient to defecate um, in their brief because we might be busy. If somebody says, I have to go to the bathroom, never, ever, ever um, offer that as a solution, okay? Um, so a couple more things. I guess we could kind of talk about how to help manage or limit stress at work and talk about how we manage stress. So if anybody has any ideas of how you manage stress, share them with your coworker, share them with your friend. Um, make time for you and your family, that's a big one. I, I know that we work a lot and that we demand and ask a lot of our staff members, but always know that if you say no, that's it, we get it. Um, but we're gonna ask, I mean, we have to, we have to staff our building, but if you're tired and we ask you to cover a shift, say no. We're not gonna beat you to the ground until you do it or, or you know, um, make you feel bad if you don't. I, I'm, not a, I'm not an advocate of, of that at all. So your time is your time. Um, find some humor and laugh every day. So go ahead and fill out the quiz, turn that in to me, and you'll get your credit. This is due every year and it is mandatory. Real quick then, because um, we've got about eight minutes left, um, and I don't want to make these longer than 30 minutes. Um, we're going to talk about change of resident condition for CNAs and change of resident condition for nurses. So why don't we start with the CNAs, okay? Um, residents are at a high risk for sudden or acute changes in our facility. Uh, we are a hospital setting. Um, Changes associated with aging that affect the normal body functions, such as reactions, may be slower. So the geriatric population is typically more prone to injuries. Um, what is an acute illness? Um, if something is acute, it's sudden and with a sudden onset. Chronic is a long-term illness. So typically six months or more, um, Chronic uh, diseases include things like diabetes, COPD, heart disease. Um, acute illnesses are things like pneumonia, um, cystitis, urinary tract infection, um, a broken bone. Um, and our residents depend on us to provide the quality of care for them and the reason that they're here is because they have significant medical issues. And so us being able to recognize a change of condition in our residents sooner than later is most likely going to be determine, you know, the likelihood of their survival, truly. We all know how quickly the geriatric population can get septic, um, even from a simple UTI, which is quite common. So let's talk about change of conditions. Um, so some of the changes that you may notice in your resident can be related to acute or chronic conditions. So some of the things that you look for is in the nervous system, you wanna look for a change of alertness, cognition, orientation, are they shaking, do they have tremors? Are they unable to move one side of their body? Um, are they confused? Do they have a new onset of numbness or tingling in their fingers? Um, so those are things that affect our nervous system and those can be clear indicators that something is wrong. Um, especially, you know, if somebody has, you ask them to smile and it's like this, or you ask them to stick out their tongue and it's like this, or, you know, their one side of their body is slumped. Changes in speech, vision, hearing, those are also part of the nervous system. So if somebody has slower garbled speech, blurred vision, spots or floaters, 
trouble speaking or trouble finding the words to say. Um, changes a condition in our cardiovascular system. We want to see if there's a change in blood pressure or pulse. You know, are they normally 110 over 70 and now they're 160 over maybe 99? I mean, that's not extremely alarming, but it's different for them. So that's definitely a change of condition. You know, are they typically usually 70 and now their pulse is 120? That is definitely a change of condition. Um, are they having chest pain? Is there pain in their left arm? Are they weak? Are they tired, fatigued, or short of breath? Um, you know, is there a new onset of swelling? Hey, I took care of this patient yesterday and their arm was not that swollen or, you know, their legs weren't swollen at all. So notify your nurse. Um, digestive system. Look at your BMs. Um, is there changes in odor, appearance, um, incontinence? Are they nauseous or vomiting? Uh, are they suddenly not eating? Uh, do they have abdominal pain, heartburn, cramps, trouble swallowing, coughing, choking, food spilling out of their mouth, pocketing? Um, uh, uh, the, ge the genitourinary system, oh, did I say that right? Um, changes in appearance, color, and amount of urine. Changes in continence, pain or discomfort, dysuria, anuria. Um, are they, is it unable or is it difficult to urine or to urinate? Um, is there blood in their urine? Is it dark and cloudy and purulent? Um, musculoskeletal system. Um, new decrease in mobility, ADL ability, pain with movement, um, swelling or reddened joints. Um, vital signs, you know, higher low temps. Is the blood pressure out of range? Is the pulse out of range? Are there respirations out of range? Are there oxygen sats out of normal range? I want everybody to know our parameters, okay? When do I notify my nurse that this blood pressure is high? Well, systolic that's the top number um anything i would say over 150 um anything less than 100 on um, both of those um pulse anything less than 60 higher than 100 um respirations anything less than 12 or anything more than 20 would also um be out of range and then of course o2 sats are they at 90 5% usually, and now all of a sudden they're at 87, 86. That's not good. Now, are they a COPD patient and they're normally at 89? So again, using our critical thinking, we have to determine what is that change of condition. Um, let's see. Pain. Biggest indicator that something's wrong. Um, increased or unrelieved pain. And then for our residents that are nonverbal, let's look for those signs. Grimacing, flinching guarding, moaning, um, skin changes. Is somebody all of a sudden bruising um, out of nowhere? Um, any open areas, swelling, edema, rashes? Um, as your nurses, as you're doing you know, your assessments, is there any lumps um, when you're palpating or moles? Uh, unusual behaviors, combativeness, aggression and anger, anxiety, sexual advances or comments, if any of that is a new onset as well. Weight changes. Um, weight changes can be a sign of illness as well. So any change in eating habits or a weight fluctuation of three or more pounds in a day, um, notify, notify me please, okay? Um, and if something is unusual for the resident, okay? Um, so in here, they do list the parameters for UCNA, so go ahead and take a look at this. Um, nurses, I'm just going to kind of play off that. Like I said, we're going to end here soon. Um, same exact thing, pretty much. Same kinds of signs and symptoms. Anybody that's on a change in condition, put them on change of condition. Notify the family. Notify the case manager. Notify the nurse. Notify the provider. Okay? Documentation is our best friend. If we notice something, we want to document that we noticed it and that we put a plan of care in place. Um, warfarin, don't forget, Coumadin monitoring twice a week. That's about it, you guys. Have a great weekend and stay cool.